Bismillahi Samiul Ali Mina Shaitan Rajim Bismillahi Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalam Ala Abibika wa Rasulika Muhammad Mustafa Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallim Give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who have restored back our souls this morning as equally giving us the opportunity of taking our zahur, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it possible for us to equally have the opportunity of taking our iftar. May he accept our siyam and accept our qiyam in this blessed month of Ramadan. If you at home, I greet you in the best mode of greeting by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We give thanks to Allah once again as we steadily progressing in this year Ramadan, may he give us the opportunity of witnessing yet another Ramadan on the surface of the earth. This morning, dear viewers at home, we shall be discussing Islamic values and the concept of leadership. We should, we could, we should recall that our focus this year on Zahur, on Zahur life uh, is how to use the month of Ramadan to restore back our value system in the society. And one of it this morning is the concept of leadership. And I will be discussing with us briefly what should be our understanding when we hear the word leadership as perceived by Islam. The first thing to be stressed is that leadership is very, very key in Islam without which there will be vacuum and there will be disorderliness in the society to the point that the Prophet وسلم, directed us that when we are embarking on a journey and we are three in number, we should appoint one among us as our leader. Because once we don't have a leader, we are going to start going in this area. We don't have anybody mean, offering the control of activities and everything will be disorganized and that what make a difference from the people of all the uh, 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 creatures of Allah we must have our leader this is the first thing we need to restore back in our mind that we can live a society without a leader and that leadership at every time there must be no vacuum if we want to remain as a coordinated group of people Two important things we need to understand is that leadership in Islam is a responsibility and not an honor. So we shouldn't be congratulating ourselves actually for the fact that somebody has been appointed as a leader, either as executive secretary, either as a director general, either as a governor, either as a, 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 a whatever position somebody has been elected or appointed to. We should be kind enough to feel for the person because he has taken mantle of, of responsibility. That leadership is a responsibility. It's not an honor. It's not something you decorate people with. And because of that, since it is a responsibility uh, in Islam, it's time to be a trust. So that position is being, and you are being, and that position is a trust. And whenever Islam tags something as a trust, what it translates to that you are going to account for it on Yamal Qiyam. So for every leader, you are going to account for your I mean you are going to give the account of your stewardship on Yamal Qiyam. Not only in this world, not only as a Muslim, you will account for everything that transpires during your tenure, you account for it. And that is why one day when a when a camel I mean stripped off the road in Iraq during the time of Umar Anim. Umar asked himself that, he, he, oh you Umar, how are you going to stand before Allah on Yam al that he came and stripped off the road just because the road, the road was not good for, for that uh, uh, camel. If you put it into our context, then what, how are we going to escape? Are the leader, at the, uh, is it at the local government level, at the state level, at the federal level, everything during your tenure in Islam, you will account for it. And that's the understanding of Islam. Another important thing we need to understand is that leadership 
I mean, as a leader, you have to command and uphold justice at all times. A leader must command and uphold justice at all times. And that is, the, that, that is the understanding of Islam. And that value, we need to restore back into our society. Yeah, you must, you must be seen. You see, and what brings justice is that you must be transparent. And uh, in Islam, you as a leader, you don't need to tell your populace that I am a transparent leader. Rather, your followers will see you and describe you as a transparent leader. Because everything's trans once you are transparent, they are the ones that will now name you as a transparent leader, not you claiming that you are a transparent uh, uh, leader. Now, leadership in Islam, must a leader in Islam must emerge through an agreed process of selection or appointment. Because you can, you can be a leader in any of these. It can be through selection. It can be through election. It can be through appointment. Leadership is leadership in Islam. Yeah. And whatever be the, the, the process, it must follow the deal. That, that process must be followed. And all the rules, all the ethics must be respected. As long as no rules, no ethics that contravain the provision of Quran and Sunnah. Because that is the yastic which a Muslim always used to determine anything. Uh, I mean, therefore, as our leader, a leader must command respect before the follower. And for a leader to, be, to command respect, it means that it must have some prerequisite skills that makes him to fit in into an office. And that is the case when the Prophet Sallallahu was appointing people into leadership position during his time. Abidar al gifar may Allah be pleased with his soul, now came to the Prophet and said that, Oh, you Prophet, we are, I'm one of your frontliners. You have been appointing my colleagues into different offices. You have not appointed me to any. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Ya Abba Gifari, O you, Abba, o you the father of Gifari, in the, in the I find you to be very weak in giving you this responsibility. And this responsibility I'm giving is going to be a disgrace for anybody who does not fulfill all what it takes to discharge that responsibility. Therefore, the Prophet Islam was highly selective. Despite the effort of Abidari in terms of mobilizing people to the fold of Islam, but when it becomes position of, of authority, he doesn't have what it takes to lead people. And that's why the Prophet does not give him that leadership mantle. Therefore, all of us too, that normally appoint people, we must see certain skills, certain prerequisite, certain quality in that person. And the one of and that's why you see that uh, yeah, somebody can actually mean bring himself forward that he has the skill, he has the quality. That's what we see in Yusuf alayhi salam. When he, 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 during his time in, in, in Egypt, when there is time, yeah, he, he provided, he said that, yes, I have the skill to manage these resources for you. Yeah, because I'm a trusted person. And therefore, he was given the opportunity and he discharged it honorably. And the records are there. So therefore, dear viewers, when you are giving people, I mean, or, I mean leadership position, they must have what it takes to discharge that responsibility. Otherwise, you are making their life miserable on Yam al -Qiyam. Because once they cannot discharge the responsibility, allow we, they will account for it on Yam al -Qiyam, and it's going to be very de devastating for them when they cannot discharge the responsibility. Now, in conclusion, when you talk about leader, it has different strata. From the home, we have leadership at home. When you have the family, at the family setting, there is a leader. The father, the mother, and the children. In that context, the father is a leader. Where in the absence of the father, the mother becomes, I mean, moves in immediately. In the absence of the father and the mother, where whoever is the eldest among the children moves in into that mantle of leadership. At the community level, we have leader. We have the we have the emir, we have the oba, we have the obis, we have the kings. All these are leadership. At the look at the local government level, we have the chairman of the local government. They are equally leader. At the state level, we have the commissioners, we have the governors. They are all leaders. 
at the federal level we have this leader every level and there must be separation as as we have separation of power there must be separation of duties and responsibility at every level the father must know his responsibility and he must discharge it appropriately the mother must know her responsibility and discharge it appropriately every leader must know his or her responsibility and discharge it accordingly if you fail in discharging your responsibility as a leader in this world Allah will hold you accountable on Yama Kiyama. And that day is very, very risky for you to stand before Allah. How do you want to defend yourself? Dear viewers, dear brethren in faith, if you are if you occupy any position of authority as of today, please use this month of Ramadan to reform yourself, to restore back the value system of Islam as regard that position you are occupying and discharge it with all sincerity and seek for Allah's forgiveness wherever you are find wanting. And you ask Allah to accept you as his humble servant on Yam al If you're able to do this one, I want to believe that uh, you will find uh, in your case more honorable on Yam al -Qiyama. But if you fail to do that, Fale Aus will lie, it's not going to be too easy uh, before Allah. Things can be missed out in human record, but nothing will be missed out in Allah's record. سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يستفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين